Hello. So today we're going to be looking a little bit on the workflow concept that we have the option to work with from within side node red. Um, so if we create a new node red instance and once it's running, we can sign in. You will see that you have a workflow in and a workflow out node. And these will allow us to create a workflow where we can create multiple instances of that workflow. And that can have multiple steps. It can have multiple ways of, of communicating with one or multiple users. But for now, let's keep it simple and simply create a workflow that uses the forms that we can create inside OpenFlow. So I need to give this a unique name. Um, we can use test. And if I don't type something here, the workflow would be called test, but I can also give it a more friendly name. So this could be my test workflow. And that means that now when I deploy it, I can now see that under the workflows tab. And when I click the play button, it will create an instance of that workflow. And then whatever result we get in node red is what the user will see. So right now, Sorry. So right now, the result of activating that workflow will be that the workflow completes. And since the user form is set to none, it will just default go back to the front page. So if I click this now, all that happens is that I get sent back to the front page. And as you can see, I don't have any running workflows. So if I click completed, I can see that I just completed the workflow. But you know, there's no you know there's no running workflow, and I wasn't prompted to do anything. So one way we can fix that is that we could say let's go idle and wait for something. And part of what we want to wait for could be that we wait on a form to be filled out. So if I go to forms, let's delete that, and I add a form. I now have the option to design a form. I can use text boxes. I can add number selectors. I can add drop down list. You can add multiple buttons and you can then inside node red see what button the user clicked. You can add the option to upload one or many files, uh, pictures, PDFs, whatever. Um, there's time selectors that, you know, there's a lot of different things we can do here. Um, one of the more interesting things is that we can we can add data grids, we can even make editable data grids and then grab data from different systems using Node Red and then present those as a data grid inside the form and, and the user can then work with that. But for now, let's keep it simple. So if I add a text box, I can give it a name. This could be my awesome text, doesn't really matter. But what is interesting is that besides doing different kinds of validations and so on, the, the most important thing is that under the API tab, we can give this field a name. And this is the name that we will then reference this field from inside Node Red. So if I call this text, I can now reference this field from inside Node Red as the name text. So let's call this test form. Uh, didn't I delete that? Oh, never mind. Um, so now I can use my test form and I can go idle. And if I go back to workflows and I create an instance, I now get presented with the form and I can type something inside it. Uh, nothing happens, but I get presented with the form. And if I go to the front page, you can see that I now have a running instance of that workflow. And I can open it and I can see that it saved the state for the form that it's presenting right now. So the next thing I might want to do is I might want to be checking if the user actually filled out that field. And depending on what the user did, I can then present something else. 
So for the sake of argument, let's try and create a confirmation form. So test confirmation. And on the confirmation form, we're going to be using uh, nah, let's, um, now let's use a uh, text area. Um, yeah, that's fine. And we can then reference this field as um, the salt. So I'm going to save. So inside Node Red, I can now create a switch statement. And using the switch statement, I can then look for the field that we created on the form, which was called text. And inside here, I can then say if this is if this is null or if it is empty, then we want to present the form. And if not, we will then do something else. So the first two will be where we know that the user didn't type anything. The first time the form is presented, it will be null. And after that, it will be an empty string. But once we have something, we can then uh, do something else based on that. So to keep it simple, we can simply complete the workflow and then leave the form as it is. <coughs> so if I click deploy and I go back to my running instance and I click submit, then the form gets grayed out. It's now completed. And if I go back to the front page, I don't see it anymore. But if I look at completed workflows, I now see the completed version of that workflow. So. One thing you normally would do is that you take some information from the user, maybe you give the user some information, and then once everything is processed and done, you show a confirmation page that is laid out differently. So to simulate that, we could add a function node. And inside here, we could say message.payload.result, which was the name of the field that we created before. We can say, uh, you typed and then add the text that the user typed. So over here, we can now use our confirmation form instead. So if I go back and I run my workflow and I type hello world, I now get you typed hello world. So now we could um, start using this workflow to interact with other things. And one of the more obvious things to interact with would be a open RPA robot. So if I go inside open RPA and I create a simple workflow, so um, form workflow. Using arguments, we can now send and or receive data from Node-RED. So if I create a, a argument called text, where I decide that I both want to receive and return input, I can now add a uh, notification um, activity that shows whatever text that I received from Node Red, and I can then update the text and say hi from robot. Um, and and Node Red will then receive the updated text. So if I save this. and I go back to Node Red, I can now actually add a robot node here and say on um, 
once the user has typed in some text and we call the text field text, the robot will then receive that text because it also receives an argument of the type text. It will then do something based on that and return a result. And the result is then sent to the function node where we update the result field with whatever the robot then returned. And we then see the result of that. So if I go back to my forms and I run it and I say hi from web page, the robot now shows a little blue message box with hi from web page. And on the web page, I now get the result you typed hi from web page and it then adds hi from robot. Um, probably you would put the result from the robot somewhere else. So maybe you would use text as, um, uh, we, could, um, we could add a robot result and set that as an out argument. And then we could say, we update the robot result instead. So now the robot will not update text, it will only update robot result. And if I then go back to here, actually no, I go back to the form and we go to our confirmation form. I can now add another text area that we call robot result and save. And now if I run my workflow, hi from web page, <coughs> I now have both the result that I created inside Node Red and I have the result that I created from the robot on the same confirmation page. So data from different places. Um, maybe you want to create something a little more advanced than this. So maybe you wanna grab some text, you then do something with that text and you then make the user decide to do something else based on that and then you show a confirmation page. We can easily do that by extending this workflow. There's multiple ways we could do this, but one way would be that um, let's add a, another switch and say we want text two to also contain some text and. Based on that, we show a form with text two. So let's go back to forms and create test form two that contains a, let's choose a select box. So we're gonna call this text two and the data is gonna be uh, option one and option two. And then we're going to present test form two. And then once that is complete, we send it to the robot and we continue the workflow. So what happens now is that when I run my workflow, I can type in hello from web. I then have to select something from the select box. So I select option two and uh, something is missing. So let's type out what it actually was that we were getting. I'm going to submit this again. And here's our text but we can see that the select has changed name. It's called select and not text two. So let's go back to the form and change the name to text two. Sorry about that. So now if I continue my workflow and I select option two, it now calls the robot and, and I now have the value to work with. So as you can see, I now have text two with the option that I selected. 
Um, yeah, I guess that's the demo for now. Um, later we can have a look at how we actually populate a select from node red or how we populate a data grid or how we can combine this with emails or chatbots. But for now, I guess this is good enough. Good luck.